I can bring it. You want that one? Take on those trees. I'm going to try. He's like, I'm a ball. What I do is I'll back up that way and go back and forth. All right, shh, y'all listen up. This is, this is Brent Hall, and Brent works for labs, as y'all can see, and, and, and he gives the devotion, with the, he uses his dogs and his devotion, so y'all give Brent a Mr. Big, give him a big hand today. I'm going to start passing these around. Do we get oh. to keep those? No, no, I just want you to look at them, and it shows some things I just want to talk about. If uh, just start that way, they can go around in different directions. Just grab a couple of them, let it them go the other way. Yeah, thank you. And what I want to use that for as an illustration is on one side of that, it shows a dog's pedigree. And if you'll notice on that pedigree, uh, I, I've had two labs. I had a black lab and this chocolate lab, and that one is of my first lab. And if you look on that pedigree, there's no champion bloodline on it, nothing, just, just a basic pedigree. And I took that dog, if you flip it around on the other side, I made a champion out of that dog. And if you you've been around, you know, hunting dogs and stuff, you know, you really look for a strong bloodline. You want it to know what you're getting. I took a chance on that dog, and I was able to get it uh, its hunting champion title. And what that showed me was is that all it takes is for someone to pour into your life and give you a little, little uh, attention and effort and support you. And that's what I was able to do with that dog. And that's really what Outreach Outdoors, I feel like, is about, is just pouring into your life, uh, giving their time to pour into yours and giving you an opportunity. So if you would, just give the staff here that help put this on around round of applause. All right, so this is Grace. Each of our dogs, we uh, pick out a scripture, and it goes with their name. And this is the first time she's been in a crowd. She's seven months old. But grace comes from 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10. It says, Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as a faithful steward of God's grace in its various forms. I just chose to use a dog. Each one of you have a God-given gift. And like Scotty, he uses this organization to uh, introduce you to the outdoors and God's great creation. And I use these labs. Here, please. So the first thing that we do when we go to get a puppy is, uh, who's ever had a dog here or went and got a puppy? Me. All right. I have a puppy. You got one. I have a puppy. And I have a puppy. I'm more of a cat person. You're more of a cat person? Okay. So when you went to pick out that puppy, uh, when I went to pick her out, a lot of times we're choosing that puppy before it chooses us. We'll go and we'll look at one and we'll pick out the one we want to want to take home, right? We chose it. A lot of times when you walk up, that puppy will come running to you and you're like, oh, that is the one. It came running after me. Our Lord is the same way. He, he has chosen us way before we choose him. It's just up to us to acknowledge that and accept that. And it's the same way with these dogs. So I named these dogs for a couple of reasons. Accountability, action, and honor. When, when I want to call this dog to action, I'll use its name, uh, its accountability kind of thing. But also, when this dog brings me honor, I want to recognize it. And that's what its name helps me do that. Uh, how does this puppy know he is mine? Goes from Psalms 91:15. He will call on me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. And as I, you see, constantly focused on me, right? Wondering what I'm going to do next, what I'm going to ask of her to 
do. Now, as we train these puppies, we'll start out on a leash, uh, maybe a long one or a short one. And it's kind of like kids, you know, when your mom carried you to the store. Here, you may hold your hand when you cross the street. Uh, it's for your protection. And until you get a little older and they can start to trust, you, you know, you're becoming more mature, you can maybe let go of the leash. In this case, I got an electronic collar. Uh, I can track my dog. I can, it's like a cell phone, it'll vibrate, let it know if it's out of hearing distance uh, that I'm giving her a command. Heel. But how does this dog know that she's mine? It's because we have walked together. Heel. 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 She's supposed to listen to me. We'll see how good she does. No, sit. <laughs> and it's because we've talked and we fellowship together. And it's a lot like that with our Lord. Mm -hmm. those. <coughs> Great. Place. Place. See it. Now, when we start out, we may get a treat when we go to vacation Bible school. You know, as we're learning and we're growing, you know, a treat kind of helps us learn. And that's how we'll uh, respond. But as we mature, uh, rewards come in different ways. And the Lord will bless us in different ways for being obedient. Now, I want to go through and show you a couple of different basic commands that, uh, that Grace has learned so far. And as we relate that to uh, our walk and our maturity, we look into John chapter 14 verse 21 whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me the one who loves me will be loved by my father and I too will love them and show myself to them now the more that this dog abides by my command the greater I'm going to be able to take it into uh, further competitions uh, just different levels in her life and it's the same way with us if we'll follow his commands he'll reveal us you know the next thing and carry us on into more maturity i talked about on and off lead the long short and then we're eventually going to go off to none if uh, she'll focus when should uh you be trusted like we talked about we can be set free but choose not to let go now if I want to show her love, and that's the way I want her to respond, because out of love, she's going to want to honor me. Now, could I use fear? I could, but that's only going to work when I got her on this. If I train her with fear, out of fear to respond to me, what's going to happen when she gets uh, out of my reaching distance or out of my sight? You know, she may not respond as well, right? It's the same way with our God. He loves us. He doesn't want us to fear him. He has grace for us. Let me see what she'll do here. Let's see. She'll stay focused. See it. See it. See it. She's used to me when I call her. No, see it. She's anticipating. That's how eager we should be. Fixed on our Lord. Here, when He calls our name, we're ready to respond. See it. See it. See it. See it. Good girl. See it. So we're gonna see if she'll stay still long enough, and we're gonna pray and open this devotional up. And pray. No, pray. Pray. Let's pray. <laughs> Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this opportunity to be in your great creation. And Father, we just pray that this devotional can uh, just reach our hearts and minds and that we may see you in a different light. And Father, just all of these events taking place today, Father, we just thank you for uh, this great organization that pours into these uh, kids. And Father, we just pray that you continue to bless us in that way. And we just give you all the glory. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good girl. Play. Sit.
Like y'all said, I don't so know. I'm, I'm, I'm fixing a retrieve. And I want to ask you, I got a question for y'all. This is a test. Okay. In Ezekiel chapter 34, verse 16, it says, I will search for the law here. I will search for the lost and bring back the strays. I will bind up the injured, strengthen the weak, but the sleek and strong I will destroy. I will shepherd the flocks with justice. You know, in Matthew it reminds us that he will leave the 99 to retrieve the one, right? And that's uh, really how these dogs work. And I'm gonna bring out these bumpers and ask you a question about the color. And in Mark chapter four, verse 22, it says, for nothing is hidden except to be revealed, nor has anything been secret, but that it would come to light. Now these bumpers are different colors. We got an orange and a white that we typically throw. I'm going to ask you a question. Which one do you think she can see the easiest? Orange. It is the white. Dogs don't see in color. They see in contrast. And the way that the contrast works is the light will show up in a dark background. Our life and our walk is really the same way. Um, if we start running with the wrong crowd and we start drifting in, you know, we may blend in with the darkness. But God will reveal the light, just like that scripture said. It will become known to him and it will become known to us. And as Christians, if we'll go out into the world, we should stand out in contrast. We should, there should be something about us that is a little different. People will notice that. I mean, you've probably already noticed it about a lot of the volunteers here. You know, they're... They're real loving, forgiving, and, and want to uh, pour into your life. Uh, we use the orange to really test the dog. Uh, and the Lord will do that in our life, too. A lot of the you know, adults know what I'm talking about. You know, he, he will test you. Not teach you, but he will test you in certain things. And as you're growing up, especially in school and things, you know, there's going to be uh, certain situations that you're going to have to recall back, you know, on what you've learned and uh, overcome that test. So, her primary job is to do the same thing it is for us Christians, is to go out and find that which is lost and return it to the master. That is her job. That's what brings her joy and brings me honor. And you can see, when I brought this out, that's when she really got focused. I mean, she, she's ready now. And we'll see how she does. Place. Deal. Deal. I'm gonna throw it over you. Grace. Here, good girl. Play. That's it. That's it. Give it. Give it. <laughs> now she's in her uh, phase where she's learned to retrieve, but she doesn't like giving up just yet. <laughs> Let me throw it again. I'm gonna throw a ball on that. Throw the orange one. Let me throw the orange and see if you can find it. All right, I will. <laughs> so, teaching her to fetch. Did you notice when she come back? Uh, she wanted to keep on to that and play with it. Mm -hmm. Now, like I was talking about, where God will bless us, we got to give back too, right? If I kept throwing bumpers. And she went and retrieved them, and she started bypassing and went and started storing them up in her house. You know, how many times do you think I would continue throwing bumpers to her and blessing her in that way? So we've got to be careful uh, and to give back uh, God, which is his. But the hardest thing for these dogs to do is to turn over control of their mouth. That's, that's what they live by. You know, they don't want to give up what they've got. You know, that's theirs, they feel like. And as we talk about that in fetching, giving control over your mouth, in Romans chapter 10, verse 9 through 10, it says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. 
For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. I think a lot of times in our own lives that, that is kind of the hardest thing to do is also is, is to make that profession uh, and also control our tongue. Now I talked a little bit about uh, pressure. The <coughs> collar, the lead for the dog, all of that is pressure. Uh, it's positive pressure when I want her to you know, heel closer, I just give a tap and I've worked with this dog to know, you know, each dog's a little different. Some can handle a lot of pressure, some can handle just a little bit of pressure. It depends on that pressure threshold of what it takes for them to respond. And we're the same way. Uh, and the master knows how much pressure we need and when we need it. It's all about timing. You will know when you feel that little small nick. Uh, and the fellowship I mentioned earlier, in John chapter 10, verse 27 through 28, says, My sheep listen to my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I'll give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hands. If, you know, I brought this puppy home, and he went back there in the backyard. Uh, when I first brought him home, he did. You know, he went back there with Runner. And if Runner, you know, being an older dog, wiser maybe, told her, say, hey, look, you got a good place here. You know, just stay within this fence. Don't don't worry about the grass isn't greener on the other side. Don't run down there and run with that crowd. If you get out uh, out of your master's sight, uh, you could be led astray. And she says, "Oh, I, you know." He says, "Yeah, there's a dog catcher out there." Well, she's never seen a dog catcher. She don't, you know. She may not know or be able to see that, but she has to believe what uh, he's telling her. Now, if she gets out and the dog catcher gets her. Oh, I can still go down there and get her because she's mine. I've got proof because I've registered her in my book of life. I own her. I'll sacrifice for her. I'll take care of her. <coughs> and in Revelation chapter 20, verse 15, it says, And anyone not found in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire, here. So Grace, she went and got that one little bumper. If she wouldn't have got that, and you know, if we're running these drills each day, you know, she runs that 10 or 15 times, at the end, I always throw what we call a fun bumper. That's her reward. She knows at the end of that, she's going to go get to chase something fun. And if we're near water, you know, I throw a duck, and we're going to throw a duck in a ball here. That's, that's her reward. But if she had given up right before, she may have known what, have never have known what the Lord had in store for us. And I've done that in my own life. And that's really what uh, I want you to see through this message is uh, be able to uh, lean on his understanding and be obedient. You want me to throw the orange one? Or you want me to throw the stuff? Duck. Orange. orange. Duck. You want to see if she find that orange? orange. Right, we'll throw the orange, then we'll throw the duck. We'll see what she does. So she's got to really focus. This was a test for her. Yeah, because it's hard for her to see. So when I, what we do is we say, Mark, and I let her know that I want to send her out on a mission. Mark. Great. And I use her name to send her on a command to let her know I'm ready for her to go. Here. Wait. You got it. Give it. Give it. Give it. <laughs> See it. There's a duck. There's a duck. Now, you remember that verse I mentioned where he'll leave the 99 to go retrieve the one? I could have a pile of bumpers here, but if I, as a master, need her to go get that one, she'll leave me and she'll leave those to go retrieve that one lost one. Lark.
see how eager she was ready to go? I mean, she's ready to go, right? Right. So in closing, just to kind of recap, we bring her home. I chose her. We give her a name for accountability. Confess. She knows when I'm calling to her. And she submits to that. She confesses. And then with pressure, she responds. And in fellowship, she listens and responds. And that's really all the Lord's asking for us. Thanks. Everybody, I want everybody, before we leave, before we walk out, let's have a moment, of, let's have a moment before we can be serious for just a moment. I want everybody to close their eyes. I want everybody to close their eyes. You know, I can't, I can't go back to doing and, and having a good time without offering up a, a decision to everybody today, you know, because... That's what this is all about. So I'm going to pose a question to you. And that question is, is, is our Lord and Savior that Brett was talking about today, do you, do you know him as personal Lord and Savior? Does he live in your heart? And if he don't, it's very simple. It's a very simple decision to make. Because he made it very simple. Jesus come to die on a cross and, and, and our sins are forgiven because of that. And all you have to do is ask Jesus to come into your heart and save you. And you can pray a prayer like this. Everybody keep your eyes closed. But you can pray a prayer just this simple. You can repeat after me and repeat it to yourself. You don't even have to repeat it out loud. Jesus come into my heart and save me and forgive me for my sins. I want to start a new life right here for you. I commit my heart to you and my life to you right now. And if you prayed that, adult, child, young person, if you prayed that today, Jesus came into your heart and you have started a relationship with him. And so without anybody looking around, without anybody looking around, if you prayed that prayer today, I'm not going to point you out, I'm not going to call you out, I'm not going to do anything like that to embarrass you. I just want to know so I can pray for you. But if you prayed that prayer today, I just want you to slip your hand up and slip it back down for me. Slip your hand up and slip it back down. Oh, people, there's a lot of people everywhere. That's great. It's the girl. That's wonderful. And just know that you started a life now for Jesus. And if you want to come talk to me or talk to Mr. Curtis or talk to Brett or talk to any of these adults about the decision you made, we, we, we'll be glad to sit down and talk to you about it. You may be here today and you may say, Scotty, I'm a Christian, but my life is not where it needs to be. But I know, I know that I know that I, I, I just I know that I need to get my life back on track for Christ. If you want to make that decision today, just, just slip your hand up and put it back down for me. People everywhere. That's awesome. All you got to do is pray and ask Jesus to forgive you for all the sin you've committed. And tell him that you want to make a new commitment for him. And, and you're forgiven. So if you pray one of those two prayers today and you want to talk to me or talk to one of these adults here, please don't hesitate, okay? All right, let's pray together real quick. Father, we thank you for your love and your grace. We thank you for your son Jesus who died for us so we could have eternal life. We thank you for Brett and Grace today, the message that Brett shared. We thank you for the ones who raised their hands and said they want to give their life to you right now. Father, we thank you for those decisions today. We thank you for the ones who just want to make a recommitment to you. We thank you for those decisions today also. And we pray, Father, that you do a work in, 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 in everyone's life here today. 
be with us now as we go back to our stations and we have a good time the rest of the afternoon. Bless us, protect us, keep us safe. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Give Brent Grace a hand again. Great leaders, y'all can get your groups back together and go to, go to hit the station.